Welcome to another deep dive. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're going to be looking at all these creators who are claiming they have the secrets to easy passive income online. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting to see all these different paths people are taking to try and reach that goal. Exactly, and I think the most interesting thing is that almost all of these creators kind of agree on one fundamental thing. Yeah. That passive doesn't actually mean like do nothing. Yeah, definitely not. You're gonna have to put in the work up front. It's all about that initial effort to build something that can then just generate income without you needing to be there all the time. Mm-hmm, like planting a tree. You have to do the work to plant it, nurture it, mm. but eventually it's going to grow and bear fruit without you constantly having to tend to it. I like that analogy. Yeah. So let's get into some specific examples. One that kept popping up was dividend investing. Ah, uh, yes. The classic own a piece of a company that pays you approach. Exactly. You buy shares in companies and they pay out a portion of their profits to their shareholders on a regular basis. So you're essentially becoming a part owner in a business. Sharing in its success. Exactly. I know Zachary Laid actually quoted John D. Rockefeller in his video who said, one of the greatest pleasures is receiving a dividend. It does kind of make you want to get started, right? It does make it seem very appealing. And there are some interesting strategies for choosing the right companies. Like Dividend Kings. Right. These companies have a long history of increasing their dividend payouts for at least 50 consecutive years. That's impressive. And there's also dividend aristocrats. Yep. They've increased their dividends for at least 25 years. Taylor Bell highlighted that they even managed to maintain those payouts during like major economic downturn. Like the Great Recession. Yeah, and even the COVID pandemic. So it seems like a pretty reliable income stream. It can be, but you don't need to be aware that you're going to need a significant amount of capital to generate substantial income solely from dividends. Right. You're not going to get rich quick with this strategy. No, it's definitely a long game. To give you an idea, Taylor Bell did the math and found that to earn just $100 per week from Target's dividend, you would need an investment of around $170,000. That's a lot of money. It is. Yeah. But even if you're starting small, the power of compounding can make a big difference over time. Exactly. Those small, consistent dividends, they can really snowball into something much larger as you reinvest them and let them grow. And speaking of snowballing, another strategy that kept coming up was affiliate marketing. Ah, yes. This is where you're essentially promoting other people's products or services and earning a commission for each sale that's made through your unique referral link. Okay. Make sure you visit BrianGarbin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. So you're kind of like a digital salesperson. In a way, yeah. yeah, but without all the pressure of having to like close deals or handle customer service. And some creators are seeing some pretty impressive results with this. Oh, definitely. Taylor Bell mentioned that some people are earning over $40,000 a month just from affiliate revenue. Wow, that's amazing. It is. But it's important to remember that success with affiliate marketing really depends on having a platform and an audience. Right. You need a way to drive traffic to those affiliate links. Exactly. Whether it's through a website, the YouTube channel, social media, or some combination of those. So it's not just about like slapping affiliate links everywhere you can. No, it's about providing genuine value to your audience and recommending products or services that you truly believe in. And that align with your interests. Absolutely. People can spot a disingenuous recommendation a mile away. All right. Let's move on to another popular method for generating passive income online. Okay. What are we thinking? Digital products. Ah, uh, yes. These are products that you create once and can sell repeatedly online without needing to restock inventory or handle physical shipping. So things like ebooks, online courses, templates, design assets, stock photos, software. The list goes on and on. And there seem to be a ton of benefits to this approach. Definitely. You have low overhead costs, yep. you can reach a global audience, and there's the potential for really high profit margins. But the key here seems to be to focus on creating high quality products yeah. that actually solve a specific problem or fulfill a need for your target audience. Mm, exactly. Taylor Bell was really emphasizing this in her video. You're not creating something just because you think it might sell. It has to provide genuine value. Yeah and help people achieve their goals. Now, I know Energy had an interesting suggestion for beginners. Oh, yeah. What was that? She suggested selling PLR, or private label rights, products. Ah, yes. That's where you purchase the rights to an existing product, and then you have the ability to rebrand and resell it 
as your own. You don't even have to create the product from scratch. Exactly. It eliminates a lot of that upfront work and allows you to tap into a market that's already proven to have demand. Okay. But what if you're not ready to write an ebook or create a whole online course? What if you don't feel like you have like expert level knowledge yet? Well, there are other ways to leverage your time and creativity. Several creators pointed to content creation as a great way to start generating passive income online. Particularly on platforms like YouTube. Exactly. You build a library of content that attracts viewers and generates ad revenue. And as your channel grows and your content library expands, the potential for passive income grows with it. Think of each video you create as an asset that can continue working for you indefinitely. Generating views and revenue even years down the line. Exactly. So you're essentially building an income generating machine. One video at a time. It's a long game, but the potential payoff can be significant. And you don't necessarily need fancy equipment or years of experience to get started. Right. The key is to provide value to your audience. Mm -hmm. What are you passionate about? What do you know a lot about? What problems can you help people solve? I know Energy actually had a really great suggestion for beginners. Oh, what's that? She said to create ambient videos. Those are the ones with relaxing visuals and music, often nature scenes, calming animations, things like that. Yeah, they're relatively simple to produce. But they can attract a large audience. Especially people looking for background noise or a, a way to unwind. And they can be monetized in a few different ways, through ads affiliate links, or even by using them to promote your own digital products. So you're creating a relaxing experience for your viewers. While simultaneously building multiple income streams for yourself. That's clever. Mm. Okay, we've covered dividends, affiliate marketing, digital products, and content creation. Quite a range. What other avenues for generating passive income online did these YouTube experts suggest? Oh, they mention a wide range of things. From renting out assets like your car on Turo or spare storage space. I know Central Media said he was doing quite well renting out his car on Turo. To exploring real estate investing or investing in REITs, which are real estate investment trusts. What are those? They allow you to invest in real estate without having to buy or manage properties directly. Oh, interesting. And what about peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms? Zachary Laid seemed to have a lot of experience with those. He did. He explained how these platforms allow you to lend money to individuals or businesses and earn interest on those loans. So it can be a way to diversify your investments. And potentially earn higher returns than traditional savings accounts. But it's important to understand the risks involved. Of course. <laughs> and there's always the option of good old-fashioned investing, like putting your money in high-yield savings accounts or certificates of deposit or CDs. Right. Those are always a good option. They are. It's about finding what aligns with your risk tolerance, your financial goals, and how much time and effort you're willing to put in. And there were even some more unconventional ideas out there, like selling domain names or social media handles. Central Media actually owns hundreds of domains. He does. He compared it to planting seeds and waiting to see which ones sprout. That's a good analogy. Mm. And then there's the idea of buying and selling intellectual property, like movies, music, or even board games. Right. But that can be a bit more complex and requires a good understanding of copyright law and licensing agreements. Okay. So maybe not for beginners. Probably not. But there are also smaller scale opportunities for generating passive income online, like doing voiceover work, selling items on eBay, or even renting out your skills on platforms like Fiverr. It's amazing what you can do online these days. It really is. Smart Money Bro actually built a successful eBay business selling shoes. Really? Yeah. He even paid for his daughter's college tuition with the profits. That's amazing. It is. And it just goes to show that with a little creativity and effort, you can find ways to generate passive income online, even if you're starting with limited resources. Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground here. But one thing is clear. There's no shortage of ideas out there. That's for sure. The key takeaway is that passive income still requires work, especially up front. Exactly. It's about finding the right approach for you putting in the effort to build something valuable and then letting that system or asset generate income over time. So it's about leverage. Leverage is key. But all this talk about online income has me thinking about the role of AI. Several creators mentioned that AI is changing the passive income game, especially online. That's a great point. It's opening up a whole new world of possibilities for creating and scaling passive income streams in ways we haven't seen before. So AI is something we're definitely going to have to dive into. Absolutely. We'll explore the intersection of AI and passive income in our next segment. Sounds fascinating. Stay tuned. All right, so let's dive into this world of AI and how it's impacting passive income, especially online. You know, Mike Vestal, one of the creators we looked at, 
He had some really eye-opening strategies for using AI to actually build and scale different types of online businesses. Yeah, I was really blown away by some of the things he was doing. Yeah. It seems like AI can be a real game changer for people who might feel a little overwhelmed by the technical side of creating things like digital products or video content. Oh, absolutely. One of the most intriguing examples he gave was using AI to help create online courses. Oh, really? Yeah. Like you could literally give an AI chat bot, like chat GPT, a prompt, like create an outline for an eight week online course on baking, <laughs> and it would generate a detailed week by week breakdown of topics and lessons. So it basically does the heavy lifting of structuring the whole course. It does. And then he showed how you could use AI to expand on specific sections, adding more depth examples details. It's like having a tireless writing assistant at your fingertips. So even if you're not a subject matter expert, you could theoretically use AI to help you create a valuable course that you could then turn around and sell online. Exactly. And it's not just limited to courses. He also demonstrated how you could use AI to write ebooks. Really? Yeah. Like he gave an example of asking ChatGPT to create a five page ebook on keto tips, but written in the style of a comedian. And it actually did it. It did. It came up with these witty chapter titles and it managed to weave humor into the explanations of these keto concepts. I was really surprised by how creative and engaging the writing was. It's incredible how versatile these AI tools are becoming. Yeah. And the beauty is that you can customize the output. Right. You can tell it how long you want the ebook to be, what tone you want it to have, who your target audience is, even what style of writing you prefer. So even if you're not a natural writer or you don't have the time to write a whole ebook yourself, you can still leverage AI to help you get it done. Exactly. And here's where it gets even more interesting. He then took it a step further and showed how you could use AI to create content for affiliate marketing. Now, we talked about affiliate marketing earlier, but using AI to create that content takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. He explained how you could give a prompt to ChatGPT, like write a high converting ad for this product written in the voice of Adam Sandler. And the AI would churn out a compelling ad that promotes the product using that specific voice and style. I love that. It's all about making your content stand out and capturing people's attention. Imagine the potential for passive income if you can leverage AI to create effective ads that drive sales. Absolutely. Well, it's like having a whole marketing team working for you 24-7, crafting persuasive copy and optimizing it for conversions. It's pretty mind-blowing. Yeah. But he didn't stop there. He also highlighted the power of using AI to create video content, mm -hmm. which can be a very time-consuming process. Definitely. He showed how you could take those AI generated scripts for those affiliate marketing ads and then feed them into platforms like Lovo.ai to create realistic AI voiceovers. And then you can combine those voiceovers with relevant visuals using tools like Invideo.ai, which automatically generates videos based on the script you provide. It's incredible. You essentially have AI doing all the heavy lifting writing the script, creating the voiceover, and even editing the video together. So even if you're camera shy or you don't have the technical skills to create videos yourself, you can still tap into the power of AI to build a YouTube channel or create engaging video content for other platforms. It really is a powerful example of how AI is opening up these new opportunities for people to generate passive income online. Yeah. It's democratizing content creation in a way that we haven't seen before. It's exciting. But with AI potentially taking over so many tasks, it does make you wonder, are there any skills that are still going to be valuable in this new landscape? Hmm. What should people be focusing on if they want to be successful in the future of online business? That's a great question. And it's something that Mike Vestal actually addressed directly in his video. He acknowledged that many jobs are likely to be impacted by AI in the coming years, and some may even become obsolete. That's a little unsettling to think about, to be honest. It makes you wonder what skills will be in demand in the future. It is. But he also emphasized that this isn't a reason to panic. Instead, he encouraged people to focus on developing skills that are what he called AI proof. AI. Skills that require uniquely human capabilities that machines, at least for now, struggle to replicate. So what are some of these AI proof skills? What should people be focusing on? Well, he didn't go into a ton of detail in this specific video, but he did highlight the importance of critical thinking, creativity, and complex problem solving. So areas where humans still have a distinct advantage over AI. Right, AI might be great at following instructions and generating content, but it can't truly understand human emotions or come up with those innovative solutions to complex problems in the same way that humans can. Those are the areas where we can really shine. It's about understanding our strengths and finding ways to collaborate with AI rather than trying to compete against it. Exactly. Okay, so AI can help us create courses, ebooks, ads, even videos.
But what about people who prefer more offline passive income streams? Did any of these creators have suggestions for those who aren't as interested in the online world? Energylist actually explored some really intriguing options that she called truly passive income streams. Truly passive. These are investments or income sources that involve minimal risk and very little upfront work. Okay, I'm all ears. <laughs> Tell me more about these truly passive income ideas. One of her suggestions was investing in certificates of deposit or CDs. I've heard of CDs, but I'm not entirely sure how they work. How do they okay. generate passive income? It's pretty straightforward. You deposit a sum of money with a bank for a fixed period of time, and in return, the bank guarantees you a specific interest rate on that deposit. Typically, the longer the term of the CD, the higher the interest rate you'll receive. So you're essentially lending your money to the bank for a set period, and they're paying you interest for the privilege of using your money. Exactly. It's a very low-risk way to grow your money passively. And Energy mentioned that you can find CDs with interest rates as high as 5.15% right now. Wow. Yeah. That's much higher than the interest rates you typically see with regular savings accounts. It is. And with CDs, you don't have to actively manage your investments. You just set it and forget it, and the interest accrues automatically over time. That sounds appealing. Minimal effort for guaranteed returns. Sounds like a win-win. Well, there is one trade-off to be aware of. You can't access the money you've invested in a CD before the maturity date without incurring penalties. So it's important to choose a term that aligns with your financial needs and goals. Yeah. If you know you might need access to the money in a year or two, a CD might not be the best option. But if you're looking for a truly passive way to grow your savings over the long term, CDs could be a great choice. Absolutely. Now, another truly passive income stream that Energy talked about is swing trading. Okay, this one sounds a bit more complex. What exactly is swing trading? It's a type of stock trading strategy where you aim to profit from price swings in the stock market by holding your investments for a few weeks or even months, rather than trying to time the market perfectly or making quick trades like day traders do. So it's kind of like a middle ground between day trading, which is very active and intense and long-term investing, where you buy and hold stocks for years. Exactly. And Energen believes it's a good option for people who are new to investing because it doesn't require the constant monitoring and rapid decision making that day trading does. But how do you know which stocks to buy and when to sell? It seems like it would take a lot of research and expertise to be successful with swing trading. It does take some research and understanding of the market, but it's not as complicated as it might seem. Energy recommends paying attention to current events, market trends, and even things like social media buzz to identify companies or industries that are experiencing a surge in demand or have positive news coverage. So it's about spotting those opportunities where a stock's price is likely to go up in the short term and then riding that wave for a few weeks or months before selling. Exactly. And there are tools and resources that can help you analyze stock charts and identify potential swing trading opportunities. But it's important to remember that there are always risks involved in any type of investing, and swing trading is no exception. Of course. No investment is entirely risk-free, and it's important to do your research and understand the potential downsides before putting your money into anything. Absolutely. But the key takeaway here is that with swing trading, you're not constantly glued to your computer screen watching every tick of the market like day traders often are. It's a more passive approach to stock market investing that can potentially generate solid returns if you do your homework and choose your trades wisely. Okay, so we've covered some intriguing options for generating truly passive income, both online and offline. What other nuggets of wisdom did these YouTube creators share? What stood out to you as particularly valuable or insightful? Well, one creator, Emman Godzi, had a rather provocative perspective on passive income that I think is worth exploring. He actually argued that the concept of passive income is a myth. A myth. But we've just been discussing all these ways to generate passive income. How can it be a myth? I know it sounds a bit contradictory, but his point is that true passive income where you do absolutely nothing and money just rolls in simply doesn't exist. There's always some level of effort or involvement required, even if it's just upfront work or occasional monitoring. Okay. I can see his point. Even with something like CDs where you just set it and forget it, yeah. you still have to do the initial research to find the best rates, open the account, and deposit the money. Mm -hmm. And with investments like stocks or real estate, there's always some level of management involved. Exactly. And even with rental properties, which are often touted as a great source of passive income, you still have to deal with finding tenants, managing repairs, and handling all the other responsibilities that come with being a landlord. So his argument is that it's more accurate to think of it as leveraged income rather than truly passive income. 
Right. It's about putting in the work up front to build systems or assemble teams that can then generate income without requiring your constant attention. So it's all about leverage. Leverage is key. He talked about two main types of leverage, systems leverage and team leverage. We've talked about systems leverage before, like using automation tools to streamline tasks or creating processes that allow your business to run more efficiently. But what did he mean by team leverage? Team leverage is all about recognizing that your time is limited. You can only do so much yourself. But by building a team, whether it's virtual assistants, freelancers, contractors, or employees, you can effectively multiply your capacity to get things done. It's about delegating tasks that don't require your unique skills or expertise and freeing up your time to focus on the things that only you can do the things that move the needle in your business. Exactly. And as you grow your team, you increase your leverage and in turn your income potential. But it's not about just throwing people at a problem. It's about strategically building a team that complements your strengths and allows you to scale your business without sacrificing quality or burning yourself out. That makes sense. Yeah. But building a team can be a daunting prospect, especially for someone who's just starting out. What advice did he have for entrepreneurs who are in those early stages of building their businesses? He stressed the importance of choosing a valuable skill and really honing in on it for the first six months or so. He used the analogy of becoming a glorified contractor where you're doing most of the work yourself while you're building your expertise and reputation. So it's about putting in the time and effort to master a skill that will be the foundation of your business. Exactly. It's about building a solid foundation before you start trying to scale up. And he emphasized that this stage is crucial for gaining a deep understanding of your chosen business model, whether it's e-commerce, online marketing consulting, or something else entirely. It's about getting your hands dirty and learning the ins and outs of how things work. So you're essentially investing in your own education and building the skills that will allow you to create leverage later on. Exactly. And he gave some specific advice for different business models. For e-commerce and dropshipping, for example, he said the most important skill to master is finding winning products, products that are in high demand and have the potential to generate significant sales. And for service-based businesses like online agencies or consulting firms, he stressed the importance of mastering sales. Right. You need to be able to clearly articulate the value of your services and persuade potential clients to invest in you. You need to be able to close deals and bring in revenue. So regardless of your chosen business model, there's a core skill that you need to master in those early stages. It's about becoming really good at something that people are willing to pay for. And then once you've honed in on that skill and started to see some success, you can begin to apply leverage. You can start to think about building systems and assembling a team to help you scale your business. That's where the real magic happens. When you can leverage your time and expertise to create something that can generate income even when you're not actively working, that's the goal. Yeah. But he also offered some words of caution. He warned against falling into the trap of the laptop lifestyle fantasy, the idea that you can just sit back and let your team do all the work while you sip cocktails on a beach somewhere. Yeah, that does sound a bit too good to be true. It does. He emphasized that building a successful business takes consistent effort and involvement even if you have a team. It's about providing leadership guidance and making sure everyone is aligned with your vision for the business. So even with leverage, there's still a role for the entrepreneur to play. Absolutely. It's not about completely detaching yourself from the business. It's about finding ways to work smarter, not harder. And he suggested that a more sustainable approach is to offer profit sharing or even equity to your team members. So that gives them a stake in the success of the business. Exactly. It aligns their incentives with yours. It's about building a team that's invested in the long-term success of the company, not just collecting a paycheck. So his message seems to be that passive income is really about building leverage through systems and teams, and that it takes time, effort, and strategic planning to get there. That's a great summary. He's really encouraging a long-term perspective, focusing on building a sustainable business that can generate income for years to come, even if you're not directly involved in the day-to-day -day operations. Okay, I'm starting to see the bigger picture here. It's not about finding some magic shortcut to riches. It's about putting in the work, developing valuable skills, and then using those skills to create something that can work for you, even when you're not working on it directly. That's a powerful mindset shift. It's about seeing passive income not as the end goal itself, but as a byproduct of building a successful and sustainable business. So what's the key takeaway from all of this? Yeah. What's the most important message that we want listeners to walk away with? I think the biggest takeaway is that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to generating passive income. 
It's about finding what aligns with your skills, interests, and resources, and then putting in the work to make it happen. And it's a journey, not a destination. It is. It takes time, effort, and a willingness to learn and adapt along the way. Yeah. There will be challenges and setbacks, but the rewards can be significant if you stick with it. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to embrace new technologies like AI. They can be incredible tools for creating leverage, automating tasks, and freeing up your time to focus on the things you're passionate about. Okay. Feeling inspired and ready to start building. Yeah. But before we wrap up, I'm curious, what other facets of this passive income puzzle haven't we explored yet? What other pieces of the puzzle should we be thinking about? That's a great question. We've talked a lot about the mechanics of generating passive income, the strategies, the tools, the techniques, but there's one crucial element we haven't delved into yet, mindset. Mindset. How does mindset play into all of this? It plays a huge E role. All of the creators we've looked at touched on certain beliefs and habits that they believe have contributed to their success. And those are things that we can all learn from and apply to our own journeys. That sounds fascinating. I'm eager to learn more about this mindset piece of the puzzle. Let's dive into that next. Okay, so let's talk about this mindset piece of the puzzle. What specific mindset shifts did these creators highlight as being important for success? Well, one that came up over and over was the importance of patience and long-term thinking. That makes sense. We've already established that building these passive income streams takes time. Exactly. It's about playing the long game. It's being willing to put in the work now and trusting that those rewards will come later. Like planting a seed? Exactly. You nurture it knowing it will eventually grow into a tree that bears fruit. I like that analogy. Yeah. I know Zachary Laid actually made a similar point in his video. He compared building passive income streams to planting a tree. It's a great analogy. You don't get to enjoy the shade or the fruit right away. Right. But if you're patient and consistent with your efforts, you'll eventually reap the rewards. And that shift from instant gratification to delayed gratification, that can be a real challenge for people. Especially in today's world where we're so used to getting things quickly and easily. It's true. It's a common trap. Mm. But a lot of these creators emphasize the importance of celebrating those small wins along the way. And recognizing progress, even if it's incremental. Exactly. It's about focusing on the journey, not just the destination. I think that's such an important point. It's easy to get so bogged down in the day-to-day -day that you lose sight of the bigger picture. Yeah. You need those little celebrations to stay motivated. Keep that momentum going. And another important mindset shift that came up was embracing failure as a learning opportunity. Ah, uh, yes. Ayman Godzi had a great way of putting it. He said he doesn't believe in failure. He only believes in feedback. I love that it takes the sting out of it and turns it into something positive. Exactly. And Smart Money Bro actually shared a great story about this. He said that when he first started his eBay business, he didn't know anything about selling shoes. Really? But he was willing to learn, experiment, and adjust his approach based on the feedback he was getting. And it paid off. It did. He was able to build a six-figure business. That's so inspiring. It shows that you don't have to be an expert to get started. Not at all. Yeah. It's more about having that willingness to learn to adapt and to keep going even when things get tough. That's the essence of a growth mindset. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got patience, resilience. No. A willingness to learn from mistakes. What other important mental qualities did these creators emphasize? Well, several of them talk about abundance. Abundance? What do they mean by that? It's the belief that there are enough opportunities out there for everyone. That success isn't a zero-sum game. So moving away from that scarcity mindset. <laughs> exactly. That feeling that there's only a limited pie, and if someone else gets a piece, there's less for you. Ah, I get it. It's believing that we can all achieve success without having to take it away from someone else. Right. And it's recognizing that there are countless ways to create value and generate income. You don't have to copy what someone else is doing or feel limited by their success. Andrew Cartwright had a great quote about this. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be afraid to step outside the box and find those groundbreaking innovations, those things that haven't been done before. Turn those innovations into a reality and you will be able to tap into a world of abundance. It's a good quote. It is. It's about seeing the world as a canvas for our creativity and ingenuity. And that abundance mindset can really open up so many more possibilities for us. Okay, so abundance, patience, resilience. These are all making sense as key ingredients in the passive income recipe. What other important mindset takeaways did these creators share? Well, a lot of them talked about action. You have to actually take action. Right. You do. It's not enough to just dream about it or come up with ideas. You have to put those ideas into motion. That's where so many people get stuck. It is. Procrastination is a big obstacle. 
But these creators encourage their viewers to overcome that inertia and just get started, even if it's with small steps. Central Media had a great line in his video. He said, stop waiting and start doing. It's a good one. It is. Sometimes you just have to trust your gut and take that leap of faith. Absolutely. And be willing to adjust course along the way. You're not going to get it perfect the first time. Nope. But the important thing is to keep moving forward, keep experimenting, keep learning. Monique Kitten made a great point about this. She said that when she first started creating and selling those low content books on Amazon, it was a lot of trial and error. Makes sense. She had to figure out what worked, what didn't, and she was constantly refining her approach. But she didn't give up. She didn't. And eventually she found a formula that worked for her. It's a great example of how being resourceful, adaptable, and persistent can really pay off. Okay. So it's not about having all the answers up front. Right. It's about having the courage to start to experiment and to embrace that learning process. Exactly. And that brings us to another crucial aspect of mindset. Self-belief. You have to believe in yourself and your ability to achieve your goals. Absolutely. If you don't believe in yourself, who will? Iman Gadzi had a great quote about this. He said, you are capable of far more than you realize. It's easy to forget that sometimes. Yeah especially when we're stepping outside our comfort zones and trying something new. It's natural to feel some fear and uncertainty, but the key is to not let those feelings paralyze you. Acknowledge them and then push forward anyway. Exactly. And it's also about surrounding yourself with people who support your vision and encourage you to keep going. Smart Money Bro mentioned this. He said he was fortunate to have a supportive wife who believed in him even when he was working those long hours building his side hustle. Having a strong support system can make all the difference, whether it's family, friends, mentors, or even just a community of like-minded individuals. It gives you a place to turn when you need encouragement advice or just a shoulder to cry on. Definitely. So we've got self-belief, action, resilience, patience, abundance. It really seems like building this passive income is as much about the inner work as it is about the outer work. It's about developing those mental qualities that will allow us to weather the storms and stay the course. It's about cultivating the mindset of a successful entrepreneur. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of passive income, what's one final thought-provoking question that we can leave our listeners with? Something for them to ponder as they embark on their own journeys. Well, several creators touched on this idea that passive income is ultimately about freedom. Freedom from the nine to five. Freedom to pursue our passions. Freedom to spend more time with loved ones. What kind of freedom are we talking about? All of the above. It's about designing a life that aligns with your values and gives you the flexibility to choose how you spend your time and energy. So it's not just about the money itself. It's about what that money represents. The opportunities. It's about the choices that it opens up for you. So here's a question for our listeners to reflect on. What does freedom look like to you? And how can passive income help you achieve it? It's a good question. Keep exploring. Keep learning and keep building toward that vision. It's out there waiting for you. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. There's a wealth of knowledge and inspiration out there, just like we discovered today with these YouTube creators. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life gentle information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. Tap into those resources, connect with others who are on a similar path, and never stop learning and growing. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of passive income. We hope you found it valuable and inspiring. Until next time, keep diving deep.